Well, here they are, Marilyn Manson, Twiggy Ramirez, and Madonna Wayne Gacy. And you call yourselves, you're Marilyn Manson because? Because that's my name. <laughs> Twiggy? Uh-huh. Mm. And Madonna Wayne Gacy. Yes. Uh, you're not going to help us understand the... Uh... Oh, you want to understand where the name came yeah. from? Yeah. Uh... I've always watched talk shows. I haven't got to watch yours very often, though. I watch more of the trashier ones, but uh, I found that Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson, about five years ago when I thought of this, were the two most memorable people from the 60s. And I thought it was interesting that things like talk shows put them on the same kind of celebrity status. And I thought uh, that uh, dichotomy of positive and negative, putting those two names together, uh, represented... Uh, what I had to say and what I was about. Uh -huh. You wanted that. Well, first of all, I want to say how sorry I am for the parents. And second of all, um, to the young people, I think it's probably a wonderful way to feel involved and to be part of something. And yeah. dancing is a wonderful way to get out your frustration. The only problem I have is, is the hurting. I'm sure that there's a much better way to get out your energy than hurting well, other you, people. You don't go out. <laughs> In response to that, you don't go out intentionally to hurt anybody. If, 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 if somebody gets hurt in the process, then so be it. That that's just, that's just comes with the territory. But you don't actually go into the pit and say, yeah, well, look at that guy. Maybe I'm going to go bust his nose. That's not how it works. That's not how it happens. Exactly. Yeah. It's random. It's exactly. You're not at anybody. You're just getting out what's inside you. Right. Exactly. You're not aiming at anybody in particular. Yes. Uh, Mr. Manson, may I call you Mr. Manson? Are you sure? Uh, from Seconds Magazine, you're quoted as saying, you have to take responsibility, you reap what you sow, and you have to clean up after yourself. I'm sick of people always trying to blame movies, bands, songs, or talk shows for whatever. Teen suicides, drug overdoses, everything else. If someone's stupid enough to kill themselves because of a song, then that's exactly what they deserve. They weren't contributing anything to, success, uh, to society. It's one less effing idiot in the world. There's too many people. If more people killed themselves over music, it wouldn't disappoint me. It would disappoint me in that it's sad that people are that stupid. Exactly. I want to know um, why it is that all of you seem to have satanic signs all over you, and what is it that makes... Does this music cause you to do what you do? Is that directed at us or the parents? That's funny. Twiggy. <laughs> uh, That's your little... Does the music cause us okay. to do what we do? Uh, we cause the music to do what it does, I think. Yeah. I think that moshing is a, is a sign of... Uh, what Christians would call uh, the apocalypse. Great it's, gnashing it's, of teeth. It's, uh, you know, the culture is just getting more and more destructive, and I think it, you know, this is a sign of the times. Yeah. And I didn't invent it, you know? No, you didn't. In fact, you look a little like Alice Cooper. Yeah. 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 Would any of the moshers know how many deaths have occurred? Well, the Mitchells are only too painfully aware of one. I don't know of any other. This is the first I've ever heard of, and, and one at Woodstock. Well, but we have a broken back over here. Woodstock, too, featured moshing, didn't it? Absolutely. It was yeah. the biggest pit in the world, and it was great. There's also a difference between the moshing, I think, which isn't as violent as stage diving. I think stage diving tends to be ignorant. If you're going to jump off a stage, you can only expect to get hurt. Um, we try and discourage people from even coming on the stage, because that's my place of business. If you come where I'm doing my business, then you should plan on doing business or you're going to get hurt. Well, doing business, uh, in other words, if they well, come up on the stage... There's a lot of heavy instruments and things like that. If you're coming up there, you're going to get hurt. There's a good chance. You know, we try and discourage people to, from coming on the stage. Right. How do you do that? We make an announcement before the show. But if somebody comes up on the stage, they're likely to be... Well, the bouncers shove them back out, and well, that's so how they do end you. up getting hurt all the time. Well, yeah, so I do, too. If they hit me, I'm going to hit them back. Right. Uh, here you are with a bit of profanity with a stage crasher. Watch this. Uh, Marilyn Manson, the performer, uh, encounters a citizen from the audience and says what? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Man, 
Thanks, Twiggy. <laughs> These are all my generation, and I know everyone says moshing is violent. And I don't mosh, but I've been to places where there's moshing. Nobody forces you into a mosh pit. Exactly. You know, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. And these people have formed a trust between them that can't be formed in other places. You can't tell me that putting a bunch of males in the middle of a dance floor going like this isn't asking for it. No, because I've been to mosh places, and I don't have to go into the pit if I don't want to. Nobody if you drags me in there. In. If, you, if you want to go to the club or the show, there's clubs on Long Island. This is I Club Smashlight you can go to. You can hang out, have a good time. You don't have to get involved. If you want to get involved, you know, you know what to expect when you get out there. If you, if you have any fear of getting hurt, you wouldn't go out there in the first place. But you're not there to get hurt. You're there to have a good time. It also depends on what band you're going to see. If you go to see bands like, like some of the local bands like Hermaphro Christ or Marble or some of the big bands that, where there's a lot of moshing, you know you're, it's going to be there. So if you, don't go and see those bands if that's not what you're into. Yeah, what's to prevent some Yahoo from bringing a shiv into this crowd? Nine times out of ten, they walk into the club, they frisk you. Huh? No, no, they the frisk you? Yeah, yeah, they have like metal detectors. Yeah, metal detectors. Yeah. You have metal detectors. Yeah. detectors. How are you going to get through that? Well, okay. they, they take a wand to it. If, it. if it's like the collar or something like that, they'll know it's that but they'll uh -huh. check jackets They make stuff. you pull out your pockets if they feel your keys in there or anything that you have to pull it out, show them what it is. Right. People aren't bringing in knives. And, and we shouldn't be off put by your look as you want us to, I suppose, black lipstick. Mm. You know, it's just not what your father dreamed for you at this uh, age. Yeah, but my parents don't mind. They're very liberal on it. They're no. not like, um... And you are drug-free and you're not stealing anybody's hubcaps no. or anything else? No. You're not <laughs> promiscuous? I have a leg legitimate job. I work at a club. I work at a record store. And this is what you enjoy doing? Yes. And you can take care of yourself? Exactly. Don't you have a little empathy, however, for the Mitchells and also for the parents of these young... We're talking 17, 16, and 16 here. Uh, you not concerned about this? I, I feel I, horrible I, about it. Oh, absolutely. I feel horrible. Horrible. We heard about that the yeah. night it happened. Everybody heard about it. And Mr. Mitchell wanted tragedy. to say, sir. I don't, a, I don't have a problem with the bands or the music unless they encourage it, and I don't know if they, do, if they do or not. The, uh, the fact that Chris was on a stage and then jo and jumped off doesn't make much sense to me sometimes either. But uh, if it's going to be... You know, I think the, I think the club uh, owners or venue that that's doing this could stop that in some way or other. The band don't want the, the kids on the stage, then the kids shouldn't go on the stage. If you don't want them to get hurt, I don't think the bouncers should be throwing them back off. No, they shouldn't. You know, not in a violent way anyway. Stopping them from coming up is, is one right. thing. Okay? But this is, to me, is as close to shouting fire in a crowded theater as you yeah. can get. Yeah. I think the stage is set here. The fuse is lit. And all you need are a couple of elbows, a couple of punches, more people get involved, and pretty soon everybody's at the door crushing everybody else. Yeah. I don't have to give you the speech about the tragedies that have developed, at, for example, at rock concerts. When they, when they showed me the films of this and they said it was called uh, dancing, I said when I was a kid it was called inciting to riot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was a whole different ballgame. Yes. Thank you. Well, never, you know... <laughs> What do I have to understand? understand yeah, please. And, you know, it's not just it's not just bands like Marilyn Manson. These guys are great. They're they a great, great band. I saw them open for Nine Inch Nails, right. and they were phenomenal. But it happens at rap concerts. It happened. We we slam dance to the country band at Woodstock. I mean, come on, it happens everywhere. My purpose is what of, we're my, doing. My purpose, of, my pur all purpose of being here is to let these kids know and the parents know that they can. The ultimate is is death, and that's right. that's what we we suffered. I have no problem with the music if that's what they want to listen right. to. Every generation is going to have their music. Right. All right. And you know, I remember when they they yelled at our music when we were, when we were kids. And we I know. I think it's music. unfortunate that you parents know. don't know what their kids are doing. You know. That disappoints me. I think parents should know what their kids are doing. I think parents should raise their kids better or someone like Marilyn Manson's going to. Sure. I, I You know, I, I have to just observe, Mr. Mitchell, as you sit next to Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Um, nowhere is the generation gap more visible than it is right here. Uh, uh, this is not to pass judgment in any no. way, but it is rather to say, you know, our grandparents had Helen Kane, you know, oop, oopy doop, and everybody thought the world was going to hell because she was... <clears throat> Never has it been quite this pronounced. I mean, really, this is... Nor have... I, 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 nor has a culture, especially a culture of young people, appeared to be so transfixed with death and darkness and evil and uh, do I uh, do everyone's, I speak the truth everyone's, Marilyn? So, everyone's so afraid of death I think that they want to get closer to it by fascinating over things like serial killers and horror movies and car crashes and that fear of that danger at these concerts and these mosh pits I think 
uh, people get a sexual thrill from it. I think that excites people. Uh -huh. So there's erotica then, is a part of moshing? Well, maybe it's not erotic, but there's, there's, a, there's a term called eustress, and it's people's euphoric feeling over their stress. Yes. I think people thrive off of that. It's like amusement park, right at your own risk. You know that the concerts, there's a hint of danger, and people like that hint of danger. Living dangerously. This audience wants to talk about that with you, and also we'll revisit moshing on the floor with all those bodies bumping into each other. Yes, it was once called slam dancing. Now we have the more euphemistic title, moshing. We'll be back in a moment. We have not yet met Paul Wertheimer. Uh, Mr. Wertheimer is a security consultant. We've got to have a consultant now for security. You uh, actually pr bring your own expertise, for example, to concerts and making sure kids don't get killed at the door. Did you, uh, and this, your work is provoked by all the deaths at concerts, isn't that so? Uh, I, I study uh, rock concert safety from the fan point of the, uh, uh -huh. from the viewpoint of the fans. Have you ever been on site when a violent uh, eruption took place? Well, I've uh, spent two and a half years uh, moshing, and I was at the Who concert in 79 after the death uh, of it's 11 just, fans. This is Cincinnati? Yeah, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh -huh. um, well, I'm going to ask you what you think is going to happen. Is Let's take one more look. Here is uh, stage diving. This is moshing. We've already met the Mitchells, whose son was thrown off a stage by a security person. And now, watch this. How safe is that? And incidentally, what happens to the net? Watch this dude here. Um, now watch, he gets punched. I want, he gets punched uh, at the end of this. Watch this. Bam! Right there. Uh, is this going to last, Mr. Wertheimer? Well, I think it's going to continue for a while, certainly. Uh, and I don't think the problem is the moshing itself in general. It certainly isn't the fan. It's the people who create the environment and don't look out for the safety of the people who do mosh. There's the problem. Really? See, I don't know how in the world you can possibly monitor the behavior of 100 people bumping into each other. Especially, do you know what I mean? I mean, I think the event itself is, I guess I'm sounding older than uh, time. Well, how about a what? How about a thousand people at a club like Roseland? Uh, I was there one night uh, waiting for my daughter to come out, and there had to be hundreds, not a hundred, but hundreds and hundreds of people coming out. Uh, and I and I want to say also this one one other thing about about uh, bodyguards. While I was waiting there, uh, some kid was trying to get in, and he didn't have a ticket. And a bodyguard came out, a bodyguard came out, or a bouncer. I'm sorry. And he was very, very aggressive with this kid, overly aggressive and yeah. almost hurt him, right in front of me. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to say? Well, let me tell you what, you, what they can do if you want please, me to. Please. First of all, they can uh, pad the floor, they can uh, retrain the security, they can pad the bars, uh, and they can have first aid and water available for fans who mosh. There's a lot that can be done. Mm -hmm. But I have some problems with a guy who is a security card under the circumstances in the first place. I'm wondering if we don't have a guy who eats nails for breakfast and looks for an opportunity to show he's got hair on his chest. Hey. And more than that, he's usually older, and he sees these kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're subhuman teenagers who are bouncing around, and, they, and there's a disdain. that There's an attitude that creeps in, and pretty soon this guy is roughing up your youngest daughter. Absolutely. This is what terrifies me. No question about it. I've been attacked by security myself and uh, it's one of the things that fans suffer the most is how they're treated by security who don't relate to the music and don't relate to them. Uh -huh. You're a security guard? Yes, I am. You are. Will you understand for us? <laughs> well, we're talking about you. Yeah, I'm working over the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a guard. Yeah. And, and how old are you? I'm 24 years old. 24. I can, like, relate with, to them. Yeah. That's why. But uh, don't you grab some people? I sure them? do. That, you know, if they're getting out of line, you know, if, if... How do you know who's out of line in there? I mean, can you, can you go in and spot me and pull me out of there? You can. You can tell if I'm elbowing? You're stuff? 350 pounds and you're elbowing a girl like 16 or 17 years old like that. There's a problem there. I would say so. Yeah. But the question is, should we have volunteers be the enforcement for the problem? I mean, what's the professional expertise here? And how do we know you're not armed well, or something's going to happen? Well, could, well, they should have certified guards. That's first of all, that's what they should have. In that Nassau Coliseum, yeah. they have, like he was saying, padded area for yeah. the body surface. Right. And there's a big gap, and there's yeah. no stage but diving there. Can, can you and I can agree that we can get some real Yahoo in the? Of course you can. Yeah. No, in the not. guard situation. In the guard can. Well, not the Coliseum. You can't. Guys <laughs> looking for to bust some heads. 
When I broke no, my leg at the you, Coliseum, you know what the security guard told me? I was limping out of the Coliseum, hopping on one leg with a broken leg. He told me, oh, medical's upstairs. That's what he told me. Yeah. So don't well, tell me there's no yacht. Well, you're not going to get Coliseum. you're not going to get tender, loving care at a place like this. We'll revisit the moshing, and this audience gets in when we come back in just a moment. Coming Be sure to include your phone number with area code. You wanted to say, sir. The gentleman with the White Sox cap in a small club where you just want to hear the music, does the audience police itself? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Clubs like the Smash Light, I uh, wish we were talking, I mean, believe you're the owner of the Smash Light, there's no bouncers there. The club polices itself. Yeah. I like to know what the job description is of the bouncers, because like, when I went to clubs, the bouncers protected the people, not throw them off the stage. So what does the bouncer do out there? He, he, he weeds out the uh, troublemakers, troublemakers. Should, however they may be identified. The this all just seems so self-centered. There must be a more constructive way to get rid of anger. Well, we live in a, we live in a country where parents raise their kids uh, to grow up feeling guilty and ashamed for not being like them with Christian morality. And these kids need a way to react against it. You're going to have a bunch of angry kids. Well, when you do go out to a club, that you just got to watch this stuff, whatever you do. Yes, you, you just do. can't expect to go out there and just dance and don't get touched and non-violent because that's what it is. It's I, I don't see how... If you, you get the music inside your soul, anything going to happen. Right. You don't play the music, you can't get it. It's the music. The music? Music is dangerous. <laughs> My sympathy to the parents, this seems like an awful pathological way for our younger generation to be acting. I'd be concerned about my daughter being in a club like this, who knows what kind of perverts you have, um, that are security and touching and feeling on the kids. Yeah. I, uh, we have... Yes, you have Kids, have you got violence other places in your lives, or is this kind of a fantasy thing oh, for you? No, well, we've no. met the parents of... I, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I'm going on to graduate school. I have a great job. This is just, I love the music, and I love to do what I do. I went to a private Christian school. See how I turned out? Yeah. I just want to say, thank God my kids are grown, and I don't have to go through this. Yes. You are, uh, you own a club, do you? Yes. Well, we're talking about you. You wanted to say. Well, I, it, my heart goes out to the Mitchells, first of all. Um... It's an inherently dangerous activity, but so is skiing, and I'm sure, I don't have the statistics, but I'm sure that there are more people killed skiing than, than there are moshing. The thing that makes this, I think, especially incendiary, is the potential for mass destruction. For all the weight of these bodies to conspire or come together in one place, you're not going to be able to breathe, you're not going to be able to move, the body cannot tolerate this kind of claustrophobic pressure, and we're going to see... Uh, fights and uh, also stampedes. I don't think you have to, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to predict that. I think you've been showing a lot more of the negative side. These people... This young man wanted to say, we'll give you a chance. These people, they enjoy what they do, they let out their aggressions, and my strategy, I think that the bouncers do get in the way. I just, I have a lot of faith in the, in the scene and I allow them to do what they want to do. And, and we really don't have any problems. What about insurance? I mean, if somebody gets clobbered or if there's a... As far as you see the way you know he broke his he broke his back and he broke his leg they they are almost proud of that and they they yeah but they, not everybody's going to I would be more worried about two girls getting into a bar brawl on, on another night that I have as far as liability is concerned but there is liability you are at risk here with this kind of uh, I, you're right you own the property in which this activity takes place right. And uh, how many F. Lee Bailey's out there, Johnny Cochran's, would love to have an opportunity well, to, to, to sue? I mean, they go crazy with this. Is the mother going to buy the tickets still for the next concert, now that she knows everything that goes on? Uh, Mom? Not at all. She'll buy them herself. No. She'll have to buy them herself. I won't buy them for her. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not likely you're going to discontinue this activity. Know. You're 17. You wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why people always look for the... the the downside of like all these events, you know, they always look for like people getting hurt and everything. They don't like realize like how good kids feel. Like they just get such an adrenaline rush. You just you feel like you're on top of the world. It's better than doing coke. Or drugs. Uh -huh. My point. You can have yeah. a good time. But my point of uh, point of being here is you can get killed. And uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can kill the street too. You know, sure you can, but there's just another way. Well, there's just, a risk. Just another is very supportive. I mean, she knows everything that I do, and she says, you know, just be careful. Your folks know where your mother knows where yeah. you are, and you you don't come home I later. Tell, I tell her everything that goes on. She just, you know, she's worried about, you know, like any 
Parent would be like worried, but you know, she doesn't and, care. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 